All right, guys, here we are headed into the final round of Swiss in the Xbox One tournament. I'm at 2-2, two and two and I need to win to get into top 8 and uh, <clears throat> make myself available for some single elimination. So the pressure's on, playing against Danny Retardable. He's playing the Jun deck with 8 steel spells, and I got a whole bunch of little tiny flyers, so... Hopefully, hopefully, you know, the matchup is in my favor. I don't think it's that much in my favor, but, it, you know, it is slightly, maybe 60-40 in my favor. We've got Double Languish and a single Rolling Thunder that are the real scary cards that could come from him. Uh, so what are we looking at in our opener? We're looking at Servitor into Engineer. Um, we can't play necessarily the three drop on curve. We're on the draw, though, so we're going to keep this. We're going to keep this on the draw. On the play, I'm not so sure, because the Sulphur Falls needs an island or a mountain, and we don't have either one of those. But uh, we should be able to play the gate, and hopefully... You know, I'm, if I don't pick up a land, I may just take turn two off, and I play the Servitor, and just go Engineer. So we'll see, you know, Mr. Retardable has started with a black... Red, it is a Smoldering Marsh, so we're obviously going to play Gate on turn 1. But uh, we may just drop the Sulphur Falls on turn 2 and skip the Rune Servitor and go straight into Thopter Engineer on 3. So he's taking a turn to fix his mana with the Evolving Wilds. I imagine it's going to be a Forest, and it is. And he plays Vampiric Rites, not too scary. So let's see, you know, basic land would be good. You know, I'd like to see that. It's not, it's an alchemist's vial. So, I mean, I can kind of gamble here by playing foundry vial and hope to pick up a basic sometime soon. But that doesn't change the fact that it's not a, a creature that can attack. So I'm just, I'm just going to play the, the Sulphur Falls. I'm just going to get that out of the way. And, uh, and next turn we'll just, you know, this is the premier three drop in the deck. You know, if you had this thing on turn three, this is what you want to play. And we have double blue, double red now, so, you know, our man is good. So he's put down a Blood Flow Kanwa Sur. That's his uh, sack outlet of choice. If I pick up, I was going to say, if I pick up a Twin Bolt, I would most definitely fire that off right now. But we're going to Engineer. You know, we're not going to Esperzoa on an empty board. And uh, we're certainly not just going to sit down and vile. So we're going to get him for one. We're not going to show him the Foundry. No real need. So, let's get over the top for one. So yeah, he's got the four active treasons and the four traitor's instincts. So he's got the eight steel spells. But uh, Vampiric Rites as a sack outlet costs two mana. He does have, obviously, the Bloodflow Connoisseur, which uh, costs no mana to sacrifice. So let's see if he just grabs the Thopter Engineer here with the traitor's instinct and punches me for four. And then and then sacks it. You know, I imagine he's going to want to use those steel spells pretty liberally. Yeah, that's that's what's coming. You know, I, I mean, he kind of has to. You know, and now that I don't have the haste, Esperzoa follow up is not that great. So he hits us for four, and then he makes his uh, Connoisseur two two. Really, really want to pick up a Twin Bolt off the top just so that I can kill that thing now. You know, I mean, I can vile it and shut it down later on. It's it's not a terribly scary thing. You know, he's down to three cards in his hand. Um, so we don't have haste and we do have four mana so I think this could be a firebird turn but he, you know he's got the steel spells we know that so perhaps it's a uh, perhaps it's a PN Kieran turn I think it's a PN Kieran turn yeah we'll throw the haste at him a little bit later on So yeah, let's play P and Karen. I don't think we really need to uh, get in a chump block mode until much, much later in the game. So, like I said, he's got two languishes and one rolling thunder that we're pretty scared of. He's he does have two reclamation sages, you know, which he can use to blow up something like Chief of the Foundry or Esperzoa. So here comes an act of treason. Is he going to grab Pia and Karen? Oh, he's, he's taking that back. Or is he going to grab a flyer? No, he's going to grab the end here. So he's coming in for four. Which we're going to take. 
And then the question is, will he sack it to Vampiric Rites and draw a card? I, I think I would if I were him. Yeah, so he's going to gain a life and draw a card here. I still think we're doing alright, though. So we picked up an Esper Zoa. Part of me really wants to just slam Firebird, the other part of me wants to Vile. And pick up a third, another land, so... If not, we'll drop Servitor. Let's see, did we pick up a land? It is a gate. I still think I gotta bring the house, though. And I still, I, I'm pretty comfortable tapping out here. You know, he spent two of his steel spells. I know he's got eight. You know, he still does have bone splinters and stuff like that, but... I think I have to press my advantage here. You know, with only, uh, like I said, three sweepers in this whole deck. I, I just gotta push and make him have it, you know. And let him go one for one with me. So here's a Rex Age. He's probably gonna blow up the, uh, yeah, he's gonna blow up the Rune Servitor and cycle his Rex Age. We get to draw a card too. And we pick up a Spy Network, which is actually pretty good. Now he's gonna swing and bring us down. Is he gonna sack the uh, the Rex Age and get him for three? No, he's just gonna just gonna get him for two. Brings to ten. Let's see what those other three mana do. If he wants to, you know, sack something to Vampiric Rites and gain some life. All right, and we pick up another Foundry. So now I'm at six mana. I can just drop a Foundry and start. Open it up, you know, but I mean, I've got Spy Network, and that draws me cards, so I, I've got to cast the Spy Network, honestly. <clears throat> and I'm going to hold back a blocker at this point. And we picked up a Pilgrim's Eye. Again, yeah, we're going to leave the uh, Alchemist Vial down, but I think this is the last time we're going to let the Vial down. I think from here on out, on 10 life, you know, and, and when I said I was going to leave back a blocker, what I meant was I'm going to leave back two. Um, and that was on purpose, it's not, you know, not me being a total idiot, but he, if he steals one, I got another one for a blocker, unless he steals the flyer, so. <clears throat> so here's the third steal spell, where's he going with it? No, he's going down below. And uh, since I've got the spy network online, you know I am going to, uh, I am going to chump block here, and I think I'm going to chump block here because he could sack and get through a pile of extra damage. So we're down to six, which is pretty low, and he's going to gain some life and draw a couple of cards. We're only going to draw one. There's a whirl of rogue. But now I've got to keep open Alchemist Vial now at all times. He's got Peerless Mirror, which is pretty kind of bad because he can sack that on demand for a two to our face. So let's see what we picked up here. It is another land, so we're on seven. All right, so Rolling Thunder is bad. No, but he's only got one of those. So let's get in. Let's draw a card here. Let's see what we pick up. It's a gate, but I'm going to play the mountain and just pass. So I'm leaving up a Foundry of the Consul's activation and an Alchemist Vial here. So I can create some instant speed chump blockers and shut down his best attacker. So I'm not going to Vial here. So he's just coming in. So we're gonna do this, create a couple of dudes. And we're just gonna block here, and we're gonna chump block. So he probably wants to use the Vampiric Rites. I, I mean, if he does it on his Rex Age, then we get to keep the flyer. So I think he probably maybe wants to let that go through. No, he's just going to sack it there. Okay. So either way, we get to keep the flyer. Instead of uh, trading off. And he's going to go to end step, and that's it. We have four power in the air. He's on 13. We're only on six, though. 
Chief of the Foundry would be a fucking sweet top deck. There's a Twin Bolt. Hmm. How much damage do we have here? How much can we present to him? How much can we present to him? I mean, we've got how much mana? One, two, three, four, five, six. And this is kind of shitty. I think perhaps we want to go wide with the rogue. Oh no, rogue's a good, a good rebuild. Is this the firebird turn? We've still got the uh, alchemist file. Is this the firebird turn? Or do I put down an Esperzoa now, finally? I think it's a Pilgrim's Eye. Esperzoa turn, leaving up the vial. Pilgrim's Eye. And let's leave a couple of dudes back for those steel spells. So let's not uh, let's not be too too hasty here. Let's see what we grab. Another land. And yeah, let's keep the vial open. Because if he if he throws a steel spell at that Esperzoa now, it's gonna be pretty shady. I mean language here is obviously bad. <coughs> We got a firebird to follow up. Lots of blockers. I mean, Rolling Thunder wins him the game now at any point. We're on six life. Now he's got double Perilous Mirror. Fuck. Languish probably wins him the game at this fucking point. Excuse me. Yeah, he's just going face here. I don't know if he has any direct damage outside of Rolling Thunder and Perilous Mirror. So uh, he's going for the burn finish. Is he trolling us somehow? Or does he actually have the game here? Let's find out. Okay, languish. So he thinks he's going to be able to attack, which is fine. Um, but he won't actually be able to. Actually, I think I'm willing to take one rather than crack my vial. Yeah, I think I'm going to take the one. Wish I had Twin Bolt open, but, you know, what can you do? It's back to a 5-5 five five now. So we get the dude. Doesn't have haste. We picked up a land. Motherfuck. So he's, he's blown a Languish. We're on one. Again, Rolling Thunder was going to kill us anyway, so that's the only... That's the only difference here. The question is... How do I want to play this? I definitely want to play a Whirler Rogue. I can tell you that right now. And a mountain. And I don't want to tap out, so it's going to be an Esperzoa. So, he languished. We built up a nice big board again, but Rolling Thunder or another Perilous Mirror, and we're just dead. So, let's see if he's got either one of those guys. Yeah, it's Perilous Mirror. We're dead. Alright. Well, that fucking sucks. Fucking sucks indeed. Okay, my well, last game one. So I gotta win two in a row in order to stay alive. Alright, on to game two. I'm in, uh, I'm in single elimination right now. I, I cannot lose a game now. Uh, if I lose this game, I'm, I'm just out. <coughs> you know, he didn't, uh, he didn't draw any gate creepers that game, which were obviously very terrible for him. And uh, he didn't draw multiples of his blood flows or anything like that. So had all the steel spells early, sweeper late, played a good game, and uh, and burned me out with Perlsmere. Perhaps I wasn't aggressive enough. Maybe I should have got on board with uh, Esperzo a bit earlier and tried to punish him in the air a little bit. But, you know, what are you going to do? Game one is over. Now it's on to game number two.
And let's have a look at our opener. See what it looks like. Give me something good. Alright, we got gate. Mirror, mirror. Network. On the play. So I think we're going to drop Rune Servitor because it does more damage, obviously. And then we'll get into the whole Peerless Mirror thing. So he drops a Cinder Glade. And we pick up P and Karen, but we don't have the second red source for that yet. And we don't have the fourth land for Spy Network. But we got a couple more plays here in the Peerless Mirrors. And so he's starting off slow like he did last game. Oh no, that's an untapped land, never mind. So Shadows of the Past, when something dies he gets to scry. Which is obviously going to be useful for him. And we picked up Double P and Karen. Nice, since we don't have the other red source. Top decking like a champ. And so here comes the Peerless Mirror. Really want that fourth land, honestly. And, and may it be untapped. I want to jam Spy Network and, and get some card draw. There's a Rootbound Craig, he's on three mana. Probably going to see a Blood Flow here. No, it's Peerless Mirror. And he's going to two for one. And cycle. Yep. And we get to throw two at his face. We get the extra draw here, though, which is pretty good because we want to hit our land drop here. I mean, hopefully I hit a mountain and, and just pee in Karen. That's that's where I want to be. It's not a mountain. So that's what we would have top decked. And uh, let's see if that Rune Servitor will actually help us this time and get us one card deeper. It does. So we get to drop pee in Karen. And load up the board. And then next turn we can drop Spy Network draw card. Unless he wants to go languish and one for one us, which is a totally a fair play. I mean, if it were me, I would do it. But he needs to have an untapped black source and a languish in his hand in order to do that. So, <coughs> excuse me. Plus uh, his steel spells, but he doesn't have a sack outlet online right now, so his steel spells aren't looking the greatest. Mega Beast wants to join a party, but you know I can't party up when I'm playing a tourney game. Come on, dude. Fuck you think this is right? Alright, so we picked up a Pilgrim's Eye, but I'm going to jam the Spy Network and start drawing some cards. I mean, that's that's pretty obvious, in my opinion. So let's uh, hold back P and Karen, hit him for two in the air, draw a card. Hopefully it's a land. And uh, a tap land at that, it would be sweet, since uh, this would be the time to play a tap land. But hey, I'll take, I'll take it. So now let's see where he's at. So he's playing in Evolving Walls. This is a bit of a slow draw for him. And uh, he cracks that. Let's see what he gets. I imagine it's going to be a swamp because that's the one he doesn't have doubles of. There's the swamp, yeah. His graveyard, he's going to be. Does it tell me? No, it doesn't tell me how, how many creatures I actually have to look, but he only has one creature in his yard. He's not going to swing. He's going to keep my Pia and Kieran home. So we're going to create a Thopter. Pick up another land. Now, I wanted that last land, the sixth one, I don't want so much. Um, so I think it might, you know, it's definitely time to push with Esperzoa, but we're, we're going to swing in the air and draw first. You know, we got P and Karen to reload after a sweeper, and he's only got three, so I, I feel pretty good playing the Zoa. Although, next turn we can Zoa Engineer, which is a pretty big smack to the face. So what I will do is Pilgrim's Eye. And uh, let's grab a mountain. And let's play the mountain so that we don't let him know we have an island in our hand. And then we don't mind overextending with the Peerless Mirror because if he does sweep the board, then uh, at least he takes two of the face. So, but yeah, Engineer Esprizoa could just end him if he doesn't sweep here. So here's the Languish. Make sure that line is going at his face. There it is. But yeah, I'm going to Engineer Esprizoa anyway. So he has seven Scry 1 triggers, so I mean, he's going to be able to find that 
Second Languish or the Rolling Thunder. But after the uh, Engineer Esperzoa beating that I give him for five next turn, then I'll have P and Karen to follow that up with. So, and he may not even find the language, who knows. But yeah, Engineer Esperzoa is going to hit him for five and draw me a card, which is a pretty strong turn. And there's the two that we're going to take. There's a Chief. Oh, fuck. But no, it's going to be Engineer Esperzoa. That's the hardest hitting play that we have. So Engineer Zoa, smack for five, draw a card. Let's see what we grab. It's a Foundry. I'm not going to show that to him, though. Alright, let's see if he's got the second language. If not, he's probably dead. Chromantic... <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Necromantic Summons, he's getting something out of my graveyard. It is 4-4 four, four Pia and Karen Nalar. It's pretty solid. He's got a couple of flyers now. We get an extra dude with haste. We have to bounce an artifact. Unfortunately. And we pick up a Pilgrim's Eye. So he's got two blockers in the air. So let's, uh, if I Pia and Kieran and then swing, I get through for not enough. If I just Chief, I think I'll just Chief. What if I Pilgrim's Eye Chief? Does that win me the game? Pilgrim's Eye Chief. All right, let's go get, uh, let's go get a mountain. What if I pee in Karen here with haste? Yeah, that wins. That wins the game. Although that other pee and Karen doesn't have haste. Shit. I'm pretty sure it still wins though. Actually, it doesn't. I need to take my time and do some actual real math. That, that was a bad play on my part. He's going to find that language now. I thought that was wide enough to actually do enough damage. But I think I was factoring Chief into my math. When it turns out that I don't actually have a Chief in play. So he's digging for that other sweeper. We get to draw a card, which is another land. Holy fuck. Well, let's see, like, he's gone very deep searching for that language. So let's see if he managed to find it. He's cracking the wilds. Rex Age, so Languish is out. Imagine Esperzo is going down. Oh, yeah, the Spy Network. I forgot about that, yeah. Spy Network it is. Let's just do it this way. Alright, so we're still alive. <coughs> Still alive in the tournament. Whew. On the game three we go. On the game three we go. I'm still coughing and sniffling a little bit, but I gotta say, the whole pneumonia thing, whatever the fuck it was, uh, it's gone, uh, it's pretty much gone away. So maybe, just maybe, you know, I'll start get back into, uh, into some regular content.
now that I can somewhat speak and I don't feel tremendously shitty, you know, just sitting in front of a microphone. Oh my. But yeah, I, you know, I should have actually taken the time to do the math there, but I thought I thought I went wide enough, but you know, in my head that Chief of the Foundry was also part of the math and I was thinking that going wide enough with a bunch of tutus would get there, but of course they were not tutus. So that that could have punished me. I mean, that was a, that was a pretty big misplay. In, uh, in a game of this magnitude, especially when he can scry like 75 times. So let's see what our hand looks like. We have four mana's good on the play with Vile, Mirror. So we're definitely, we can play out Mirror. Um, we can Vile on a third turn if we have to, and then Pia Karen on the play. This is good. So there's the gate down. All right, game three. I gotta win this one to get into top eight. All right, so let's focus. I may talk a bit less. is real. I'm gonna act like we have a twin bolt, he doesn't take the bait.
One of these days he's gonna fear the twin bolt. Boundary off the top for the win. Nope. Anyway, if he sweeps the board, I can crack my foundry EOT, swing over the top for two, and then firecraft him. So uh, keep open my six mana. Smell the languisher. No? Alright, let's see what we can do here. Is that enough? That'll do it, guys. Game three. Really worried after that game one loss, but uh, you know, like I said, the matchup was in my favor. Just you know, with all those steel spells against my little guys, he was uh, he was definitely you know in the in the back seat there. So, uh, but after the first game, my heart was up in my throat, and uh, I managed to pull off two consecutive wins and uh, make it to three and two. I'm pretty sure I'm in top eight now. Thanks guys for watching. Follow the tournament thread down below. See who's playing who. Single elimination starts next. Sorry I haven't been around, but I'm feeling better. Hope to see you guys. With some more varied, more regular content coming soon. Thanks, guys, for watching.